Hi everyone, and welcome to this lightning lecture, right to left language support in Xamarin Forms 3. My name is Glenn Stevens, senior content developer at Microsoft and part of the Xamarin University team. Now thinking back, I remember my first mobile application that I uploaded to the iOS app store. It was actually a port of a desktop app that I'd originally written for Windows. And as the first few days after being released, I was collecting uh, really a list of all the countries that the app had sold in. And then shortly after the first week, I'd actually realized I'd collected all the countries. So it kind of goes to show that when we write apps, they actually go out to an international market. And if you're shipping your app to one language or culture only, you might be missing out on reaching a much wider audience for your app. So in fact, if you're shipping your app in English only, then you're really only reaching probably just under 6% of the world's population. So being able to reach a wider percentage of people is one way to grow your application's market. Now, in order to internationalize your app, there's actually a number of things you'd need to do. So first, you'd need to translate the text for your app. You'd also need to design your app's user interface to cover different sizes for text. So for example, when translating to German, the words tend to get longer on average. And lastly, you also need to manage your user interface so you can support right to left languages like Arabic or Hebrew. It's this new support in Xamarin Forms 3 for right to left languages that we're gonna be looking at today. Now the other first two points are still relevant though. For translating your app, you'd actually use the multilingual toolkit, which is available as an extension through Visual Studio 2017. In addition, there's also a video on channel nine with James Montemagno and Cameron Learham on how to use the tooling. It's very excellent, I advise you to watch it. And those guides will show you how to use the toolkit in combination also with Azure Cognitive Services to automate much of that translation for you. It's really quite a, a magical tool. Now on that second point, when it comes to dealing with different sizes of text for your application, just be aware that you might need to ensure that your layouts are using the appropriate sizing information for the tooling. So for example, if you had a Xamarin Forms grid and you had text in the first column and that first column was set to a fixed width, then most likely you'd need to change that to an auto sizing column to allow for changes in the length of the translated strings. So that's the first two points. They're really looking at the logistics of the user interface and translation. Now, it's this last point, the right to left language support, which really has been just released as part of Xamarin Forms 3 that we're gonna really be focusing on. Now, also keep in mind, today's presentation is being given in English, which is a left to right language. For us, we begin reading from the left and then we continue reading to the right. And the majority of languages actually fit into this model. And not only does text work this way, but user interfaces in general will be read from left to right because that's how we inherently scan things the same way we read. Now, in a similar way, if you were in a right to left country, then you'd read your text starting from the right and then read to the left. And because this is the way your brain scans, user interfaces will tend to scan the same way too. So let's take a, a very simple user interface, which is a Xamarin Forms grid, just doing some data collection. I've got two columns and I've also got a number of rows just to indicate some data that I'm collecting and maybe a submit button down the bottom. So you can see here we're collecting the, the name, we're collecting the email and also the, the phone. Now, in addition, you might be wondering, what's this markup extension I've got here, the localize? Well, this is actually uh, just my slight modification on this great plugin that you can get. You can see this one here. There's a plugin actually translate extension. It's from a, a Microsoft MVP, Charlene Agramonte, and she does some amazing work in the local community, also develops these great little components. And I love it. It's a, a real way to get access to your resources used for translation. So I'll provide the link on the screen. I encourage you to, to check it out. I, I tend to actually just modify mine slightly just so I can use the ISE, just so I can use the ISE or IZE, depending on how you spell it. And that way I can just conveniently introduce this XML namespace for local. And then when I want to translate, I can just write local. I think that's pretty easy to remember. So I've got my name, my email, and my phone label phone label, and this is coming from my resources that I've got specified in the application. So certainly have a look at that video with James Wonder Magno. There's some great resources in there on how to automate a lot of this translation. You can see I've got English and I've got Arabic being displayed here. So that looks at the, certainly at the text, but what we need to do is look at the direction 
of the language as well. In Xamarin Forms 3, we can change the language direction by setting a property called flow direction. And if I look at, at this component here, all the visual controls have a property called flow direction that can be set to one of three values. We have left to right, and that means the content flows from left to right. We've got right to left, meaning the content flows from right to left. And we've also got match parent. So match parent means that the direction will match what the parent's flow direction will be. So this is the default option because it'll always allow you to set the flow direction on a layout or a page and have that flow down through the child controls in a similar way to the binding context. So I'll just remove that for the time being. And I've got my user interface here. It's looking at these localized options. And if I just pop back, I do have a select language page on this application. It'll allow me to select either English or Arabic. So we've got left to right English or right to left Arabic. Now, if I look at the code behind, there's a few things I'm doing here. In effect, what I'm doing is I'm setting the page when I'm showing a language, I'm passing in the language and whether I should show it right to left. In this case here, I'm setting the flow direction to either right to left or left to right for that entire page. So that'll flow down to all the controls, such as the, the grid in my particular case. And let's actually go ahead and run this. I'm going to run this on Android first. I'll just set that as the startup project. And we'll be able to see this running very shortly. We'll just wait for it to start up. Okay, and here's the application running now. As you can see, I've got those two buttons left to right, which will display the content in English and right to left, which will show it in Arabic. So I'm gonna show left to right first. So I'll touch on that button. There you can see the contents displaying nicely. It's using the details from the English resources file. I'll just navigate back and I'll just use right to left in Arabic. And here you can see all the Arabic text is now being used. And you can see the, the flow layout being used here from right to left. And that's a, a really nice feature. But also at the top here, you can see it's slightly a little bit different. You can see my back arrows on the left. In a true right to left mechanism, that shouldn't be the case. I'm going to show you a feature of the developer options in Android that you may not be using. So if I go into settings, go into developer options, and I'll just scroll down to the bottom, and you'll actually see a force RTL layout option here. So I've actually forced this particular layout to go the other way, just so I can use this for testing. Now, I won't always do this. Most of the time, if you're trying to do this testing, it's actually a better idea that you change the language. In my case, I'm, I'm demonstrating English as well as Arabic. So the other aspect you would want to do in the developer options is you might want to change the language. Also, if you're changing the language, make sure you know how to get back there so you can set it to the defaults. For my particular device, I know that I go into the settings app, I go to the, the green icon, the first green icon is the languages, and I just drill into that on the first item and I'll get to the language list. So in my case here, I'm going to change the language to Arabic, which is further down. Here we are. And that'll change the, the device and it's running right to left. So there's also some other things that you need to do in order to make sure that your application will run on Android. Android actually has a few minimum requirements, but you'll need to set the minimum target of Android to version 17. So basically Android Jelly Bean 4.2. And you'll also need to add an XML tag into your application element in the Android manifest file. So if I go back here, if I look at the Android manifest, I've updated that manifest to include the Android supports RTL equals true. So we've got the application there. Let's actually go back to Visual Studio and rerun it. Now at the moment, I'm actually using the, the culture based on the application. What I should really be doing is actually setting the, the details based on the, the current device. So in this particular case, I'm showing the language using the, the default mechanism here, but you can actually get access to the, the cultural information too. So there's the cross multilingual, which is the singleton for this plugin dot current. And there's also the, the device culture info. So you can get information about what's running on the device. So you'd also need to update the, 
app resources here just to make sure you're getting the correct resources file for the current locale. Okay, so now if I run this application, I should see it present using the, the right to left mechanisms. The first page is actually only in English. It was designed so I could just navigate to, to various techniques, but you actually might want to do that. You might be creating an application that instructs someone on how to speak a language. So you might want the ability to switch. But in this case, I'm going to switch to Arabic. And there you can see all the, the details pop up here, as well as the, the right to left navigation. So some parts of it is done through Xamarin Forms. Some things we actually need to set up on an application level to make sure we get that right to left support. Now, likewise, on the other platforms, there's a few other things that you would need to do as well. If I look at iOS, there's some subtlety that I need to do to the info.plist file. If I scroll down to the bottom, there's some entries that I need to add in. In particular, we've got the CF bundle development region. So this is the, the locale that you develop the application in. So this is the, the default language, so to speak. And also the, the other locales or the other locations that you have support for within your application. So here I've got just an array of strings and I've got English and Arabic. Now, finally, as well for UWP, you'd also need to add the supported languages to the packages AppX manifest file. So here we're adding English and Arabic in that list. You can see before we had the resource language equals X generate. That's actually a really useful mechanism that will actually look through your application, see what you have support for, and then populate that resources list for you. But I'm going to be very specific in this case and just define English and Arabic. Okay, so at the moment, what I've got in my set language page code is I'm setting the flow direction directly for the new page that I'm creating, the one that's demonstrating that the customer data collection. But what I really want to do is instead of setting the, the flow direction via code, I should really use the devices locale and how that's set. So I can do that on a, on a page level just by using the flow direction property. So I'm going to use XAML in this case, and I'm going to use the, the markup extension ecstatic. I'll just make sure I've got the capital S. And I'm going to use a property on the device object, that very useful device object that no doubt all our Xamarin Forms developers know and love. And I'm going to set it to the flow direction. And that means it's going to get the flow direction based on the locale for the device. So if it's English, it'll display it left to right. If it's in Arabic, it'll display it right to left. So there you have it, another super exciting feature that we have in Xamarin Forms 3.0. There's lots of great stuff. This is just one of the many lightning lectures in the, the Xamarin Forms 3 launch series. So hopefully spend some time, look at some of the other great features that we have there. And I hope to see you on some of the, the Xamarin University classes. Take care.